Okay, boys and girls, remember what we learned last week? Inanimate objects can't hurt anyone unless there's the application of an external force. When you get right down to it, the gun is what is going to do the killing. The gun is what is going to do the killing. Words are chosen, crafted, and arranged to convey and evoke thoughts, instill knowledge, instruct, and even incite emotions. What emotions do you think these words are intended to evoke? Um, assault rifles. These assault weapons or assault rifles. An assault rifle. I don't know how they got the idea of an assault weapon. <laughs> an assault rifle. We're having a conversation about assault weapons. Uh, assault weapons that can kill many people much quicker, okay? An assault, so-called assault weapons ban. And by the way, I've shot assault weapons in a firing range. It is kind of fun. And assault, uh, assault rifles. You literally push assault weapons on your kids. You put them in their, in the tiny little hands in front of a Christmas tree. That's what you lunatics do on the right. The problem is the guns, gun violence, assault style rifles. Assault weapons to 6% of the country. As ridiculously, painfully, and embarrassingly fundamental as this is and continues to be, assault weapons or assault rifles are words thrown together to achieve a particular purpose to scare the unthinking masses into being on board and complying with an infringement on rights. Assault is a verb, meaning to make a physical attack. An assault is the illegal act of causing physical harm or unwanted physical contact to another person. A verb is an action, and actions are performed by people. Inanimate objects can do nothing and therefore cannot be linked to any action like assault. As dumb as I feel saying this, this is how far down the path of insanity we've gone. People are attaching actionable words to inanimate objects so that they can enact policies that they say are an attempt to get assault weapons out of circulation in order to save lives specifically the lives of children. You want children to be saved, don't you? Well, if you love children, then you'll turn in your weapons. If you don't turn in your weapons, you don't love children. It's the same old false dichotomy we hear everywhere. The argument is, as highlighted here by the Young Turks, that the common through line in all these mass shootings happens to be the guns. It's only the guns. Endless gun violence in this country, which of course, what's the through line there? The guns. There is a uniting factor to all, literally all, 100% of the mass shootings, uh, weapons, guns. Using this same argument, there are other uniting factors in all these mass shootings, like pharmaceutical drugs, fathers absent from the home. Also noteworthy, the majority of these kinds of shootings happen to happen in gun-free zones. These people are always talking about banning guns, but I've never heard anybody talk about banning gun-free zones. But there is another notable uniting factor in eliminating the threat of a mass shooter, guns. People call men with guns to engage and eliminate mass shooters. But the Young Turks and people like them don't talk about eliminating the guns of special agents of the state. They're talking about eliminating your guns. They say you don't need AR-15s to defend yourself and there's no justification for you to even own an AR-15. You don't need an AR-15 for that. You definitely, definitely don't need one. What it does is it more efficiently kills a lot more people. Like is, is a gang of 15 people about to break into your house and you need an assault weapon to hit them all at once? No, unless there's some sort of weirdo CIA, FBI agent, that's not gonna happen, okay? We're talking about automatic weapons that kill a lot of people at once, and there is no justification for that. You can get other types of guns to protect yourself and your family. I don't think you need an AR-15 to either defend yourself or to hunt pigs. And I have no problem with law-abiding citizens having weapons. But do you need an AR-15? No. Is that really necessary? No, you don't need one at all. You don't need them, they say. 
That's why it's not called the Bill of Needs, it's the Bill of Rights. You have the right to own whatever you want to own, and you don't have to justify your possession of it. Why you have it is irrelevant. I was in my 20s, I'd say probably about the age of 22 when I first bought my um, assault rifles. So nobody buys assault rifles. Nobody owns assault rifles. Why? Because they don't exist. If assault rifles or assault weapons do exist, then what makes this an assault weapon while this right here is not an assault weapon? The gun of choice, by the way, for mass murderers is still the handgun. These people wanting to ban these scary black assault rifles, which is really their desire to ensure that politicians criminalize innocent gun owners, really don't want you to have any kind of gun at all. Listen to the mentality of Cenk Uger, who, by the way, is simply echoing the sentiments of many who are manipulated by this anti-gun rhetoric and propaganda. He says we're screwed as a country because we have so many AR-15s, and he further says that other countries rightly think we're crazy because 31% of Americans own guns. First of all, we're screwed. AR-15s, uh, there's about 20 million of them in the country now. What are you going to do? Okay, so 31% uh, of Americans own guns, which, look, if you live in America, you think that's normal, maybe even low. For every other country right now, they're like, what? And a third of the citizens own weapons? That's crazy. In many other nations, and certainly in the developed nations, that it's like a fraction, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage that own guns. So the idea that every third person has a weapon on them or at home is just mental to the rest of the world, as well as it should be. Did you get that? Jank thinks you're mental for owning a gun, yet his studio is probably surrounded by armed security. He knows the White House and Congress is surrounded by an army of heavily armed agents ready to defend politicians, but you, you're mental if you own guns so you can protect your family or yourself. Jank goes even further and admits that if he could start this whole country over, he would do like other countries and greatly reduce gun ownership. Uh, if I had to start over again in America, I would do what every other developed nation does and greatly limit guns because it is clearly making us less safe. It's not that Jenk doesn't understand that these gun bans are criminalizing innocent gun owners who will never initiate violence. He totally understands this, but he thinks you should be criminalized anyway because there are crazy people out there who will commit crimes with their guns. You're not the ones doing it. I get it. Every gun owner thinks, well, I wouldn't do it. But yes, but if you give it to 31% of the country, guns everywhere, you give assault weapons to 6% of the country, some percentage of them are going to use them to kill us. And it's not worth your hobby or your fun or your nonsense right wing talking points. So because 6% of the population might possibly go berserk and start hurting people with their guns, we should turn ours in? That's about as stupid a statement as you're ever going to hear on this issue. Here's the bottom line with guns. Criminals will always have them. These same criminals will never follow the laws, not the old ones and not the new ones. And when you make laws banning guns, you criminalize innocent people who aren't criminals. And when law abiders turn in their guns, they're now disempowered while the street criminals and the criminals in government are empowered and emboldened to have their way with the people who were relieved of their guns by the psychos in government. In the words of Clint Eastwood, of course I'm for gun control. If there's a gun around, I want to be in control of it. If you like this video, stick around. Maybe you'll like some of my others. Check out the most popular video section. There's definitely a couple of videos in there you'll want to see. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my private email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you want to support the channel further, the links are in the description and you can buy a hard hitting conversation starting design that you can put on any shirt, hoodie, mug, cell phone case, whatever you want. I'll see you in the next video.